What's up everyone, in this video I'm going to show 3 excel formulas from worst to best that you can use to find the last row of a certain column. Each worksheet that I have for formula 1, formula 2 and formula 3 will have the same column showing a list of names. To start off, let's go over the first formula or in our case the function we'll use to find the last row um, in the formula 1 worksheet here. In cell D1, I'm going to type out equal to count A. And we get the description, count the number of cells in a range that are not empty. If I do tab, and I'm going to reference the entire column A here. Freeze the column in place. And press enter. We get back the number 20, which corresponds to the last row in column A. And let's say that you want to return the actual name, or like the actual value in row number 20. We can use the index function as well. So if I do index, reference the array, which will be column A and then comma, and the row number will be the count a function we used, and close this out, press enter, and we get back Tariq Ali again. So if I delete this value here, we'll get back Alir Smith instead, which is row number 19. So let's go back to like the actual last row number instead of the value for it, or like the index for it. Now while this function is very simple and easy to use, you would have to deal with the major issue of having a blank cell in the range you're referencing. So for example, let's say that I want you to enter a value in row 22 and not row 21. If I enter something like this, instead of getting back the number 22, we get back 21 instead, which is the incorrect row. That's because the count function functions counting everything that's not blank. So it wouldn't count this value here. So when using the count a function, you have to make sure that you don't have any blank cells in between your data. The next formula I'm going to show you is much more dynamic and flexible than using the count a function, but it is more computationally intensive. So let's go to the formula 2 worksheet and I'm going to break down a series of functions that I'll be using to explain the formula to find the last row. In cell E1, the first thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to find the row number for each row in column A, whether they are blank or not. And we can do that by doing equals to row, the row function, but not the rows here and reference the entire column and we get back all these numbers here down to the last row of 1.04 million. The next thing I want to do is that I want to see which cells are blank or not. So what I can do is that I can do equals to is blank and reference column A again and we get back a list of false and true statements here. Now you'll notice that all the falses here lines up wherever like this data in column A while all the true statements lines up with the blank values in column A. What we want to do is that we want to invert these together or invert these with each other so that wherever it shows a data in column A, we get back true and wherever we have a blank data, we get back false instead. And we can do that by using the not function. If I do not of is blank, which is going to change all the false to truths and all the truths to false, we get back the inverted true and false statements. So one cool thing with Excel is that true and false represents a number. True represents the number 1 and false represents the number 0. So if I use the int function, you'll see what I mean. So if I use int to convert the true and false to an integers, we get back 1s and zeros here. And what we can do is that we can multiply each value in column E with the value in column F. So if I get like, if I see here, right, the value of 20, which is the last row number here, 20 times 1 is 20, but 21 times 0 is 0. Let's do that. So if we do equals to all the values in column E times all the values in column F, we get back all the numbers from 1 to 20 and the rest being zeros. And what we can do next is that we can apply the max function to this entire column here to get back the last row number, which is 20. And that's basically a breakdown of how you can use these functions together to find the last row dynamically. So let's actually build a formula. I can do equals to max of row column A times not is blank of column A and close this out, close this out and press enter and we get back 20. You'll notice that I didn't include the int function because like you don't really need to include that as Excel will calculate these as zeros and ones by default when you're multiplying them. The int function was just to showcase how these true and false values look. So let's try to test this out then. We have the last row of 20 here. What if we put in a value here while row 21 is blank? We get back 22 instead. If I put in another value here, a random value, 
we get back 23 instead. So this formula will take into account blank values at the same time as non-blank values, making it much more dynamic. But remember, this formula is computationally heavy as Excel is performing calculations on each row in the entire column. The final formula I'm going to show you is much more efficient than this one. So let's go to the Formula 3 worksheet. And for this formula, the main functions we need are the lookup function and the row function. The first thing I'm going to do is build the formula for finding the last row number with the lookup and the row functions, and then go over what each component of the formula does step by step. In cell D1, I'm going to type out equals to lookup, and the lookup value states looks up a value either from a one row or one column range or from an array provided for backward compatibility. It might not make sense what it means, but we'll go over that part more later. So I'm going to do tab and we have three arguments here, lookup value, lookup vector, and result vector. Now, if you've been using X lookup function before, this might look familiar to you where X lookup would have the lookup value, the lookup array and the result array or the return array. So for the lookup value, I'm going to put in the number two comma, the lookup vector will be one divided by open parentheses, all of column A in a fixed position, not equals to nothing, and then close this out and comma, and then the result vector will be the row of column A. And I'll just freeze the cell references, close this out, and close the lookup function out. Press enter, and we get back the row number of 20. So once again, if I put in a random value here, we should get back row 21, which we do. If I skip row 22 and put something in row 23 instead, we get back row 23, which is correct. So let's go over what each component of the formula does. We're going to start off at the second argument, which is one divided by column A is not equal to nothing. In cell F1, I'm going to state that what I'm going to do equals to column A, reference column A in a fixed position is not equal to nothing. And what this does is that it prints out all the true and false values for each row in column A. If the cell in column A is not blank, then we're going to get back true. But if it is blank, we're going to get back false. And each true and false values can be represented by a number, where true is the number 1 and false represents the number 0. So if we were to divide each row, well, if we were to do 1 divided by each row, like this, 1 divided by column A, and press enter, we get back 1, since 1 divided by 1 equals 1, but 1 divided by 0 this gives us a divisible by 0 error. And next, let's go over the third argument, which is the row of column A. So in column G, I'm going to type out equals to row and reference the entirety of column A again. Press enter. And we get back all the row numbers for each row in column A from 1 down to 1.04 million. As for the first parameter of the lookup function, we're going to be passing in the value of 2. The lookup function will try to search for the value of 2 in the lookup array as shown in column F. If 2 does not exist in the lookup array, then it would look for the next highest value, which is 1. While we have multiple values of 1, the function will try to choose the number 1 that is closest towards the end of the lookup array, which is in this case, this row here. Then the function will match the corresponding value from the return array in column G, which will give us the last row number. So that's pretty much it for three Excel functions or formulas you can use to find the last row number from worst to best. If you want to see another cool formula that I created, then check out this video I uploaded before, where I show how you can make a dynamic and error-proof running total formula with Excel scan function. If you guys found this video to be helpful, then please like and comment down below what else you'd want to see. And if you haven't already, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.